Hi, this is Richard Dennis. I'd love to spend a few minutes getting acquainted here, but we truly don't have the time. You and I probably haven't met. However, there's a good chance you've seen me on television. I live in Florida City, Florida, last stop in the U.S. mainland before you go into the Florida Keys. And if you were watching CNN in August, the days after Hurricane Andrew, you probably saw a video shot from a helicopter, a bunch of poor schmucks rummaging through the rubble of their mobile homes trying to find some trinkets to salvage. I was the guy in the green hat waving up at the camera. Felt like that darn helicopter was standing on my head. Now, well, it's a year or so since the storm. We moved into our new home on Valentine's Day. Stop by next time you're down that way. Then we can get acquainted. Now, there's so much ground to cover. You're going to realize you've learned at least ten times as much about nutrition as you've learned in your entire life. It's seven or eight hours of lecture material from Dr. Joel Wallach. Condensed. So put on your track shoes. Pay attention. Now, I've driven a city bus in Miami for 15 years. My wife Cheryl and I have four kids, three girls, one boy, our oldest daughter's married. And because of my son's life-threatening disease, I've done a lot of research, reading, the past few years. I've come up with some stuff that will be real useful to you, regardless of your present state of health. Okay, enough about me. Now, who should listen? Three types of people. First, if you have a family member or close friend with a disease that's degenerative, incurable, genetic, or terminal. Pretty scary words. In many cases, they just aren't true. I know. My son was diagnosed in September 1989 with Duchenne muscular dystrophy. The doctor said all four of those awful words to my wife and me. But I've hit the point now, I don't believe any of them is true. So we're talking about diseases like multiple sclerosis, diabetes, heart disease, cystic fibrosis, muscular dystrophy, cerebral palsy, AIDS, etc., etc. Second case, if you have any nagging physical complaints yourself, assorted aches, pains, loss of vision or hearing, baldness, insomnia, irritability, bone spurs, constipation, arthritis, respiratory problems, or a host of others. In 1966, I played football for the University of Oregon, but I hurt my back in weight training. Result? Chronic low back pain for 26 years. But now, after some advice from a chiropractor and a few weeks of taking mineral, which you'll hear more about later, my low back problems are 100% gone. If anything is wrong with your health, you need to hear some of Dr. Wallach's ideas. And third, if there's nothing wrong with the health of yourself or anyone you know, you still need to listen. Why? Because you're going to learn how to keep it that way. Listen, one of the axioms in marketing is you can't sell prevention. In other words, a lady with cancer will move heaven and earth to get rid of it. But if she doesn't have it, she won't walk across the street to learn how to prevent cancer. I think it's pretty much true. But I think the prevention you're going to learn about will end up saving you a world of grief and trouble. So I'll make you a deal. Just listen to the next 20 minutes. If you're not convinced in that time you've learned some life-changing stuff, go back to whatever you were doing. I'm going to tell you some stuff you don't know. Some stuff will probably astonish you. So you should start by realizing how skeptical I am of stuff like this. I've taken my share of vitamins over the years, never got a nickel's worth of value out of any of them. If they don't make me feel better, I figure it's a scam. And yet, I'm going to tell you about a nutritional product that's changed my life, despite the fact I sure didn't believe in it when I started. So I'm pretty skeptical of every environmental horror story. And yet, I'm going to tell you one I've come to believe is true. It's real logical. It explains an awful lot about the sorry state of health of so many people in this country. Let's see. I better point out here I'm expressing these opinions under the First Amendment of the U.S. Constitution, which grants the right to discuss openly and freely all matters of public concern and to express viewpoints no matter how controversial or unaccepted they may be. A certain persons considered experts may disagree with one or many of the statements on this tape. The views and ideas you're going to hear come mostly from the many hours I've spent listening to Dr. Joel Wallach, and I believe that man is the foremost expert in his field. His unique veterinary background makes him especially qualified to compare animal nutrition and diseases to human nutrition and diseases. However, I'm not a doctor not a nutritionist, not a licensed dietitian. Hey, I never even finished my college degree. And no statement in this tape should be construed as recommending a product for treatment or prevention of any disease. Results are nutritional only. What you're about to hear is mostly not accepted by the consensus of medical opinion. This information is strictly for educational use. Finally, before we start, if you're listening to this because you're interested in a good business opportunity, that's okay. But there's something you need to realize. It's mined from a 70 million year old mineral deposit deep in a mountain in southern Utah. It was discovered in 1926. It's been popular in several western states for over 60 years now. The product is not manufactured, 
which means there's no competition because no one can duplicate it in a chemical laboratory except at enormous expense. To compete, you'd have to locate a similar, well-preserved, prehistoric underground mineral deposit. Good luck. Now, you have to believe the logic and the facts behind the unique mineral product and then use it yourself. Bottom line, if you love the products, then I'll be happy to talk with you about business. Caveat emptor. Dr. Wallach has a pretty impressive resume. Since the information you're about to get is based on his research, it's important you understand a bit about Dr. Joel Wallach and his unique qualifications. Since he was a child, he wanted to travel and work with animals. After getting his veterinary degree in 1964 at the University of Missouri, he received a research grant that gave him his dream. Dr. Wallach spent three years studying comparative pathology, comparing human diseases with animal diseases at the Center for the Biology of Natural Systems, Washington University. He traveled the world to discover why zoo animals got sick and or died in captivity. Much of this research was nutritional, based in a laboratory he discovered that many diseases resulted from simple mineral deficiencies or inability to absorb nutrients and minerals. If he withheld specific minerals from mother animals' diets, Dr. Wallach discovered he could create offspring with, quote, genetic, unquote, or viral debilities like muscular dystrophy, cystic fibrosis, cancer, diabetes, birth defects. He was amazed to discover all the human diseases he was studying had been cured or prevented in animals with nutrition. Upon presenting this important information to the medical community, Dr. Wallach was fired from his research position with 24 hours notice, and all this only 10 days after his wife died of cancer. Now, you feel free to interpret this action however you want. Dr. Wallach concluded the medical community felt threatened by his results. The idea of simple prevention with inexpensive minerals doesn't bring the mega profit they look for in treating disease. Anyway, Dr. Wallach decided to tell others about his discoveries. But in order to reach people, he needed to become a people doctor. So he returned to school, earned his naturopathic degree from the National College of Naturopathic Medicine in Portland, Oregon. He also served as associate professor of clinical nutrition there. He's written 70 published articles. He's co-authored eight textbooks. His research in comparative medicine is based on more than 13,700 cases from the University of Missouri, Iowa State University, St. Louis Zoological Gardens, Chicago Zoological Gardens, host others, including Harbin Medical University in the People's Republic of China. He's been a member of the Board of Governors of the National Health Federation, done extensive research into the mineral selenium, especially in connection with cystic fibrosis and muscular dystrophy. He's been medical director of the Cascade Wellness Institute in Cannon Beach, Oregon. So Dr. Wallach's insights come from over 25 years of research, laboratory research, clinical experience. He achieved acclaim as a medical researcher in the 1970s. He collaborated on several texts now used in medical schools across the U.S. Dr. Wallach has autopsied 14,000 head of livestock and 1,200 humans, so he has extensive first-hand knowledge of both animal and human pathology. Now. He travels the world sharing his experience and educating people on how to overcome their mineral deficiencies. He's married to Dr. Ma Lan, lives in the San Diego, California area. Now, I'd like to give you some statistics. You can find these in your almanac from the Senate Committee on Health. In 1991, the U.S. spent $750 billion on health care and $293 billion on defense. Everybody talks about how much money we spend on defense. It was two and a half times what we spent on defense, we spent on health care. In 1991, the World Health Organization said the U.S. ranked 17th in longevity. So 16 other countries, citizens lived longer than we did. They also rank us 19th in healthfulness. So in 18 other countries, the citizens are older before they get diabetes or heart disease and so forth. And the one which really bothers you the most because they don't have anything to say about it, we rank 23rd and first-year survivability in live births of children. The United States, 23rd. 22 other countries do a better job when it comes to normal babies in the first year. And that's amazing. Not only that, millions of dollars have been spent in perfecting diets for laboratory animals. Millions. They've perfected diets so the offspring, the babies, are consistently healthy time after time after time, pregnancy after pregnancy after pregnancy. A lab mouse will probably have 12 or 14 babies. Each one of them is perfect. But when humans have multiple births, usually the infants are underweight, they have physical defects, respiratory problems. So we know human nutrition during pregnancy is not optimal. 
Now, a rough average of the World Health Organization figures would say there's 20 countries healthier than we are. Their total income, their total production, gross national product of these 20 countries, get this, is less, less than the $750 billion we spend on health care. We're not getting our money's worth. And worse, we don't really care. Why? Because insurance pays. And that's perceived as free. And you don't mind running the account up because it's free. But you don't have the problem of medical non-performance in the animal industry. Why? No insurance. Everybody has to pay for their own animal care, whether it's a rancher with a lot of livestock or somebody with a pet goldfish. Let's go back in history a bit. Late 1700s, early 1800s, Americans began to cross the Great Plains and the prairies. What you probably don't know is they never just settled in one place and stayed. Every three to five years, they'd pick up and move. They'd start with a little farm in Kansas or Nebraska, milk cow, a couple kids, some sheep. After three to five years, one of the kids would die. Dad would get consumption. Cow would dry up. Tomatoes would be spindly little plants, little hard, dried up fruits on them. So the family was about to starve. And if they made it through the winter, they'd throw all their stuff in a wagon, move 100 miles west, set up again. In three to five years, another kid would die. Mod get consumption this winter. Tomatoes would be spindly little plants, dried up fruits, and the cow would dry up. If they made it through the winter, they'd throw everything in the wagon, move west again. What was happening? The soil was being depleted. Only way you could beat that cycle was to own a piece of bottom land. Wealthy farmers owned the bottom land. Every three to five years, it would flood. Flood would bring in new topsoil and silt and nutrition to the soil from hundreds of miles upstream. So if you were lucky enough to have a piece of bottom land, you didn't have to move because the fertilizer had come to you. But if you're out in the prairie with no rivers, every three to five years, you'd have to pick up and move. Otherwise, next spring and summer, your whole family would starve to death, be nothing left. And about the turn of the century, commercial fertilizer became available. When you go in your local garden center, look at the fertilizers, you always see three numbers on the bag. Maybe 666 or 1066 or 2126. You know what it means? Well, for any kind of plants, let's say 2016-12, that's the percentages of nutrients in the fertilizer, nitrogen to phosphorus to potassium, NPK. Doesn't matter the kind of plant, whether it's potatoes or okra, corn, wheat, eggplants, carrots, broccoli, that NPK fertilizer is all you need, all you need to get the maximum yield per acre. It's the only nutrition plants need. Think about this. It takes three to five years to exhaust the soil doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure this out. We didn't start putting fertilizer in the soil until about 1900. So we've been putting NPK into the soil for 93 years, which means that for 88 plus years, soil's been exhausted, except for what the plants need. And we know that animals and human beings need somewhere between 45 and 60 minerals, 12 essential amino acids, 16 plus vitamins, three essential fatty acids. So we have about 90 nutrients that human beings and animals require. And for 88 years, only three have been put in the soil. Now, plants can make amino acids. They can make most vitamins. They can make varying amounts of essential fatty acids. But nothing, nothing can make a mineral. That's one of the definitions of an element or a mineral. They cannot be created or destroyed. Does this begin to concern you a little bit? It bothered me quite a bit when I realized it. For 93 years, we've been putting NPK into the soil takes three to five years to exhaust what animals and people need. We need all those minerals. Plants can't make them. Where's this stuff coming from? Some people say, what about compost? Well, if you're composting your unused plants, that'll give you more NPK, no other minerals. What about hydroponically grown tomatoes and cucumbers? Any minerals in there? Ah, uh, they're grown in water and NPK. What does organically grown mean? Jam full of vitamins and minerals? Nope. What organically grown means is no pesticides or herbicides are used. Now, there may be some organic farmers that do add extra vitamins and minerals, but that's not in the definition of organic. And the purpose of something being organically grown is to prevent cancer-causing chemicals from getting into your food chain. Does the term organically grown say anything about the nutritional value of the food? Absolutely not. So what about the lady who buys a $350 juicer to juice organically grown carrots? What's she getting? some beta carotene, good taste. But what about the 45 to 60 minerals she needs? No. American agriculture has mined the soil, 
You know what a strip mine is? People used to go nuts when companies had strip mined for coal and copper, but that was nothing compared to strip mining our farm soils. Because when you put in a crop and raise it and take it out and put in NPK and put in another crop and raise it and take it out and put in NPK and put in another crop and raise it and take it out, what happens in three to five years? You've mined that soil. There's nothing left in there. A little bit of sand, some clay, a lot of NPK. With NPK, the plants will be happy. Lots of NPK and compost. Plants will grow big and green, look beautiful, produce great vegetables with virtually no minerals in them. Calcium is the most common mineral in your body. What diseases are caused by calcium deficiency? Osteoporosis is the number 10 cause of death amongst adults in the U.S. Someone fractures a hip, goes in the hospital, dies of pulmonary embolism or some other complication of the osteoporosis. What about receding gums? Take a look at dogs and cats and mice and rabbits and lions, horses, cows, any other animals. They don't get receding gums. Why? Receding gums is really just osteoporosis of the jaw bones and facial bones. What about kidney stones, heel spurs? What's the first thing a doctor tells you to do nutritionally if you have a kidney stone or heel spur? Give up dairy, because you've got too much calcium in your body. Hey, don't believe it. Look, there's nothing against your family doctor. I'm sure he's real good at what he does, but that's the key. What does he do? His job is to cure your symptoms after you've gotten sick. That's what drugs and surgery do. They cure the symptoms after you've gotten sick. And they're expensive as hell, as if I had to tell you that. But that's what he's been trained to do. He's never been trained in prevention. And if you have a mineral deficiency, chances are good you may develop a mineral deficient disease. But many mineral deficiencies can be easily corrected. And Dr. Wallach, of course, believes we can bring a lot of people back to health by restoring the proper nutrition, too. I'm sure you love your doctor, but if you can see him just a little less often, wouldn't that be worthwhile? Let's get back to calcium. Where's the calcium come from in heel spurs and kidney stones? From your bones. <laughs> from your bones. The calcium in heel spurs and kidney stones and calcium deposits comes right out of your bones. Some people are afraid of taking too much calcium, but Dr. Wallach says you can eat a concrete truckload of calcium. You won't get kidney stones, won't get heel spurs. Constipated? Yeah, guaranteed but no kidney stones, no heel spurs. This has been known in veterinary medicine for 75 years. Why? Because sheep and cattle get kidney stones and heel spurs, usually when they're real young because they're growing up on calcium deficient soil. They only put in NPK, doesn't take long for the cattle or sheep to get kidney stones. Now a lamb costs eight bucks when it's born. Know what it costs to get a vet out to the farm? If it's real close, hour or so, maybe 50 bucks or so. A couple hours or he has to fly out there, maybe 250 bucks. So what farmer in his right mind is going to call a vet out for this cute little eight-buck lamb with big brown eyes? He's not. Just not economically sane. So what the farmer does is called ball peen therapy. Bonk! And in the ditch. So the farmer's lost eight bucks, but he doesn't have to pay the $250. Of course, when the lamb gets big enough to sell for lamb chops, it's a $50 profit. But it still never pays the vet bill. But veterinarians and farmers learned a long time ago how to prevent these things. Just make sure every animal out in the pasture has a salt lick, a mineral lick, and if they really want to grow up healthy without a lot of vet bills, they give them pellets with all the nutrition in it. But guess what? The farmers don't take the minerals for themselves, just for their livestock. Now, there's two little glands in the neck, the thyroid glands. On top of the thyroid are four other little glands about the size of a pea called the parathyroids. Your blood calcium ranges between 8.5 and 10.5 milligrams per cent in your blood. And you can have a raging calcium deficiency in your diet, but your parathyroid and thyroid will keep your blood calcium in that normal range. How? They take the calcium from your bones. Dr. Wallach says almost everyone has a calcium deficiency. But if you had a blood test done, your calcium would show normal. The first actual sign of calcium deficiency is a cramp so bad you'll be running around screaming. Next sign is convulsions. Be flopping around on the floor like you have some terrible neurological disease. And if that's not where you are now, your blood calcium will show normal. So what happens when the thyroid and parathyroid keep working, working? After years, there's no more calcium left in your bones. What happens to those glands? They get exhausted. And how do exhausted glands react? They enlarge. They figure, hey, nothing's happening. I've got to get bigger, do a better job. So you don't feel too good. You go to the doctor. He sends you to the specialist. And what's he do? <laughs> he 
He surgically removes your parathyroid glands. Have you ever made rock candy? You supersaturate the solution. Put as much sugar in the water as you can until it just won't tolerate anymore. It's swirling around. You let the water cool. And what happens to all the sugar in solution? You put a string with a nail on it, drop it down in there, let it hang down. What happens to sugar? It comes out of the solution, gathers around the nail. Presto, rock candy. Same way you get kidney stones. It comes from the calcium your parathyroid squeezes out of your bones. That calcium crystallizes out in your kidneys as stones. And your bones are real soft because your parathyroid's pulled out all that calcium. And there's a tendon from your big toe to your heel, and then your Achilles tendon down the back of your leg to your heel. And these big tendons are pulling on those ice cream soft, mushy, custard-like bones. So what happens? They pull a spur. 100% of the time, always. Same place. It's not random. You don't just randomly get calcium deposits here, there, wherever. It's always where a tendon or a ligament inserts. And when these tendons and ligaments put force uh, on that soft, custard-like bone, it pulls a spur. And when you walk on it, it's painful. Look, at the end of this stuff, I'm going to tell you about a real special product. But right now, I'll tell you that for 30 years, I had severe pain in both elbows. Started when I was a teenager, throwing a baseball with both arms. By the time I was 18, I couldn't throw anything with either arm. Until a few months ago. A week after I began taking the mineral, I tried throwing. Both arms are fine. No problem. So what had happened? I don't know. I can only guess that I probably had calcium deposits, maybe bone spurs in the elbows, from the lack of calcium. And once that lack was remedied, the problem went away. Only question is, why did I live with the pain for 30 years before I figured it out? Of course, if I hadn't met Dr. Wallach, I probably would have taken it to my grave. Now, what else does calcium do? Works on insomnia, irritability, PMS, low back problems, arthritis, hypertension, muscle cramps, twitches, manic depression, receding gums. All those problems can be caused by calcium deficiency. Now, how do veterinarians eliminate all this stuff in animals? Just give them proper nutrition. That's why they pelletize food, so the animals can't sort out the corn from the wheat, from the sunflower seeds, from the raisins. Every mouthful that animal eats is perfect nutrition, so animals get all the goodies. A University of California study concluded late in 1991, you could eliminate PMS in a lot of women and 80% of the symptoms in most women by just doubling the calcium intake through supplements. Now, how about arthritis? You want false joints? That's what the doctors are doing now. You go into an orthopedic surgeon. Hypertension, you go to a cardiologist or an internist. Receiving gums, you go to a dentist. Low back pain, an orthopedic surgeon or chiropractor. You can go to a bunch of different doctors. Over five years, you could easily spend 10, 20,000 bucks or more in care, either out of your own pocket or insurance. And if you have all these problems, you could go through anywhere from five to 20 surgical procedures or invasive tests that might kill you. Hypertension, they want to get you in there and do bypasses. Put all these tubes in your arteries. That's life endangering. Costs thousands of bucks. Now, if your dog has these problems and you take them to a vet, the vet's going to give your dog $2.50 worth of calcium and say, well, that ought to take care of it. <laughs> What's the difference here? Insurance. Yeah, insurance. There's no pressure on anyone to discover a method of prevention because insurance pays for everything. But if a little calcium prevents these problems in your dog and in any other animal, isn't it at least worth a try for you and your family? Doesn't it concern you just the slightest bit your dog gets far better nutrition than your kids do? Let's talk about copper for a minute. Everybody worries about too much copper, but we don't get enough in the U.S. One of the first signs of copper deficiency is gray hair. If you see a 20-year-old woman with gray hair, she better take care of it now before she gets pregnant because you're looking at birth defects here. Whether it's something simple like a hernia or webbed fingers or toes or cleft palate or cleft lip or, or worse, like heart or brain defects, you can get them all from a deficiency. Also, copper is used by the enzyme that creates elastic fibers in your body. As you get older, your skin starts to sag on your face. Women's breasts begin to sag. And that's due to the lack of copper to make the elastic fibers necessary for support. And it's easily reversed by increasing your copper. You don't need silicone implants. All you need is more copper. Then there's aneurysms. Bursts in your brain, you die of a cerebral hemorrhage. If your aorta goes, you'll die from hemorrhaging real quick. An aneurysm is a weakening of the wall of the artery because the copper deficiency doesn't allow the proper formation of the elastic fibers. And you get a balloon in the artery, just like you've seen a balloon on a bicycle tire. Now here's a story let you know what happened with animals. 
1958, the U.S. Department of Agriculture decided everybody would get a turkey for Thanksgiving. Before that, they also got ham or roast chicken or duck. But in 58, they decided to ranch turkey commercially, and they came up with a pelletized turkey food. Now, in that first year, they raised turkeys, and half of them died before the age of 13 weeks with a ruptured aortic aneurysm. The farmers had come out every morning, pick them up in bushel baskets. They took them to the labs and analyzed their livers and tissues, realized it was a copper deficiency. So they doubled the copper. Next year, they raised turkeys. Didn't lose a single one to an aneurysm, all because they upped the copper. Dr. Wallach says anyone with an artery who doesn't take copper is real silly. You can prevent aneurysms just by making sure you take enough copper. It's that simple. Next case, lithium. It's not a drug, even though psychiatrists use it all the time. They give it to manic depressives and criminally insane people. All kinds of emotional problems. But lithium is actually a trace mineral. You can get it in food supplements. Then there's gallium. It's a trace trace mineral because it's in such small amounts. Gallium has a bearing on your immunity to brain tumors and brain function. It's actually used as a therapy along with cesium chloride and some of the other trace minerals to get into the brain and reduce the risk of tumor. Then there's tin. Lots of people have a tin deficiency. Two symptoms. We didn't used to have these things now when we got our food in tin cans. But now everything's in aluminum cans or stainless steel or plastic. So tin deficiency is popping up all over. The two symptoms are bilateral baldness equally on both sides and reduced reaction to sound. But tin will bring that back to normal. Let's talk about the number three cause of death in adults in the U.S. That's number three. So we're talking about a real important disease here. Dr. Wallach says for 15 to 20 cents a day, you can prevent this, maybe even cure it if you catch it in the early stages. Might be worthwhile, don't you think? I mean, we spent 750 billion bucks on health care last year, remember? The disease? Diabetes. Side effects? Blindness, gangrene, amputations, heart disease, high blood pressure, emotional stuff, kidney failure, transplants, dialysis. Sound like we're racking up some bucks here? Short lifespan if you get diabetes before age 30, your average lifespan is 55. Truth is, we've known how to prevent and cure diabetes since 1958, and it's not a salt-free diet or sugar-free diet. For 15 to 20 cents a day, you can prevent all this stuff. The trace minerals we're talking about with diabetes are chromium and vanadium. We've known this since 58. It was published in the journal Federation Proceedings, August 1958. That's the official journal of the National Institutes of Health. We're not talking about Mother Earth magazine here. This is an official government scientific journal. And Canadian researchers have shown that chromium and vanadium together eliminate the need for insulin in diabetics. Now, I'm not recommending to anyone with diabetes they give up their insulin. But you can take chromium and vanadium for a couple weeks and have your blood sugar tested. Chances are the doctor will tell you to lower your daily insulin level. Dr. Wallach says after three to six months, doctor will have you off your insulin. No way can your doctor or any doctor know everything. They have too much to do. I'll bet they don't even learn 5% of the new stuff in their own field, let alone something completely new to them like nutrition. It's not your doctor's fault. But it's your health. You need to take an active stance. Make some choices of your own. Doctor isn't going to pay your medical expenses. You need to take control of your family's health. Make some tough choices. Let's talk about the number one and number two cause of deaths in adults in the U.S. Number one, heart disease. Cancer's number two. And if you take this particular trace mineral, you get some other benefits. Prevents cataracts. In the early stages, you can reverse them. Same with liver cirrhosis. And the big one in my son's life, muscular dystrophy. In animals, it's called stiff lamb disease or white muscle disease, fish flesh. The first symptom in humans is often scoliosis, curvature of the spine. And once that spine starts to curve wrong, it's real tough for the person to keep their balance. So you often get real enlarged calves because the guy's constantly using the calf muscles to try to keep the body from falling. And that wastes your muscles in a hurry. They atrophy. Now, everybody knows muscular dystrophy is genetic because the doctors tell us so. But several years ago, a group of medical doctors put out a pie chart titled Causes of Developmental Defects in Man. And the category known genetic transmissions is only 20%. Radiation is less than 1%, and unknown is 70% of all the birth defects in man. As Dr. Wallach says, I'd bet the ranch that 99.9% .9 of those unknown defects are the result of a nutritional deficiency. Now, muscular dystrophy is kind of like arthritis. It's not all or nothing. There's various stages. And there's no medical treatment that does anything more than relieve some of the symptoms. 
And of course, if you have a boy with Duchenne muscular dystrophy like my son Garth has, you're told he'll be in a wheelchair by age 10 to 12 at the latest. The muscles will all turn to fat by age 15. He'll generally die a respiratory failure by late teens, early 20s. It's a pretty devastating disease for a family. But does it have to be that way? I don't think so. And Dr. Wallach believes that one part of the solution to MD and many other serious diseases is the trace mineral selenium. Selenium was learned to be an essential nutrient for animals in 1958, and some doctors still say it's poison for humans. Dr. Wallach was on the TV show 2020 in 1978 talking about how beneficial selenium is, and the director of the National Toxicology Center in Denver was also on the show to say there's no known use for selenium in the human body. It's a toxic metal. He wouldn't give it to a well person, let alone a sick person. So what's the truth? Well, in New England, down the eastern seaboard, Florida, the Gulf Coast, around the Great Lakes, up in the Great Northwest, west of the Cascade Mountains in Washington, Oregon, where I went to college, you have high rainfall areas. And in these areas, there's absolutely no selenium because it's very soluble in water. Hasn't been selenium in these areas for thousands of years. Now, according to Dr. Wallach, back before the 1950s, 55 to 80 percent of the baby animals born in these high rainfall areas would die of muscular dystrophy before they were a couple months of age. Hear that? 55 to 80 percent. If you lived in Florida back then, for instance, you know they never raised cattle in Florida. Lots of cattle now. 50 years ago? Uh-uh. Couldn't do it. Every time they tried, the cows would all die. Obviously, farmers and ranchers couldn't stay in business that way. So what'd they do with that farmland? Take a guess. <laughs> you know, they raised human food. Couldn't support animals on it, so they raised human food. Pretty ironic, huh? In 1958, farmers, veterinarians, and the agricultural departments of universities cured and prevented two diseases which were thought to be genetic in animals and are still thought to be genetic in humans muscular dystrophy and cystic fibrosis. They're both fatal diseases of children, but they were totally eliminated in animals in 1958 just by supplementing selenium. Yeah, you heard right. Muscular dystrophy, cystic fibrosis were totally eliminated in animals in 1958. Now, some people tell you we know nothing about selenium, but we do know the metabolic pathway. There's four atoms of selenium in the enzyme glutathione peroxidase works along with vitamin E to prevent damage to the fatty membranes along the mitochondria in the cells of your body. Without selenium, you get a rancidity of the fat in the membranes of the cells of your body. Cells don't work anymore, like in muscular dystrophy. Looks yellowish brown, just like it's rancid. Normal fat is totally white. The muscle is made up of big purple fibers. It causes the muscle to appear big, but in fact, the function is greatly reduced. Now, selenium deficiency was originally studied just after World War II in prisoners of war released from the Japanese or German or Russian prison camps. Didn't matter how much nutrition they got, they frequently died within six months to three years from a liver disease. Dr. Klaus Schwartz studied the disease, discovered back in 1958 it was due to a selenium deficiency. And the same deficiency was discovered back then to also cause MD in animals. The red muscle turns white with scar tissue. There's very little blood supply left, and it's non-functional. Microscopically, the muscle is replaced by calcium deposits and scar tissue. Same thing happens in people as in animals. Dr. Wallach says by taking selenium, you can arrest MD, reverse it in young kids, and if a mother of an MD child takes selenium beginning two months before conception, she won't have any more MD kids. Then there's heart attacks. You can prevent heart attacks with selenium. According to Dr. Wallach, 97% of all heart attacks don't occur because you get a blood clot in the arteries. It's because the muscle dies, and then you get a blood clot in the artery after the muscle dies. It used to be called mulberry heart disease in pigs. Farmers learned how to cure it in a hurry, just give them selenium. What good does a coronary bypass really do? Recent articles make the claim bypass surgery is a waste of time. The heart muscle is already dead by the time they do the bypass. Makes you feel good, you get more oxygen there for a while, but they can't repair the dead muscle. So the new idea now is to do coronary bypasses before you get the heart attack. Does that sound like some cash registers ringing? Now, let's talk about cancer. This one trace mineral, selenium, is real interesting when it comes to cancer research. You could fill a large meeting room with all the research papers been done on cancer and selenium. Why? Well, let's say you take 200 female rats, divide them into two groups of 100. In one group, feed them the standard rat pellet without selenium. Then give them a certain cancer-causing chemical. 
you get 100% breast cancer in those female rats. Other group, give them the same chemical, same dosage, same rat pellet. Only thing you do different is add selenium. And of the 100 female rats in this group, you may get one cancer or none. Does that sound at all interesting? Dr. Wallach says if there's ever a natural disaster, food's hard to come by, while everybody else lines up for steaks and carrots and apples, he'll make a beeline for the dry dog food. Why? Well, has everything in it. You could fill a pickup truck with about 18 bags of dry dog food, live real healthfully for a year. Now, people say, oh, I got to ask my doctor. Go ahead. Problem is, in a few minutes here, you already know more than your doctor does. No doctor's going to give you permission. Usually a doctor says, well, I wouldn't do it. You're going to get expensive urine, just wasting your money. All you need to do is eat the five food groups. But where does the nutrition in the five food groups come from? Right? Ultimately from the soil. And if the soil's deficient, guess what? You're not getting selenium or chromium, vanadium, calcium, or any minerals except nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium from eating the five food groups. Back to calcium for a minute. Here's why they say some funny things about calcium. When you take a vitamin mineral tablet, you're taking in what's called metallic minerals. You only absorb 8 to 12 percent of these metallic minerals. The rest of it just passes right through you. Now, if you talk to a chiropractor who x-rays patients, sometimes they'll tell you that what they see in the x-rays lined up in the small intestines of the patients who take vitamin and mineral tablets are the tablets, like little boxcars, taking a big long ride, bumping on through the intestine all the way out and plunk down in the toilet. How much good does that do you? But that's what happens a lot of the time with metallic minerals. Now, the health food industry knew that was a big problem because people complained about it. They developed chelated minerals. You wrap amino acids or proteins around the metallic minerals, that gets you up to maybe 40% absorption. Now, metallic minerals come from oyster shell, calcium carbonate, limestone, clay, sea salts. All of these are metals. Dr. Wallach says human beings are not meant to absorb them or to use them. We're just not. Certain animals are. But whether your tablets are chelated or not, that's where your minerals are coming from. So let me tell you about the other form of mineral. Nearly everybody, especially the so-called experts, misunderstands the minerals. It doesn't come from rocks and soil. It's not metallic. Minerals come from humic shale, which is what? Well, prehistoric plant life in its concentrated form. It was first discovered and sold in 1926. That's almost 70 years ago. We're not talking about some brand new unproven product part of an underground humic shale deposit from a mountaintop in Utah. Today, still mined on that mountain. Get this, it's been there 70 million years. Air was full of oxygen back then, not like today. Some trees grew 25 feet a year. Earth was nutrient rich. Not too many farmers stripped mine in the soil 70 million years ago. What you did have was brontosaurus. Now how'd the minerals get into the plants back then? Of course they originated in soil and rock but they were transferred to plants through the process of photosynthesis, and that made them colloidal, which is our key word for today. Comparing colloidal minerals to rock and shell-based minerals is like comparing filet mignon to gristle. Colloidal minerals have a negative electrical charge. They're hundreds of times smaller. They stay suspended rather than going into solution because of the negative charge and their size to weight ratio. Expert chemists will tell you the reason colloidals are non-toxic is their plant or vegetable source and their negative electrical charge. For example, iodine in colloidal form is one of the elements essential for human cells. Now, if you drank even two or three grains of free iodine, it'd kill you. But you could drink a glass full of colloidal iodine. It's not only harmless, it's beneficial. Same for arsenic and other deadly poisons in colloidal form. Now, colloidals are the smallest particles that matter can be divided into while still keeping individual characteristics. They range from one one-hundredth of a millionth of an inch to ten millionths of an inch in size. Smaller ones can't be seen with any microscope. And because of their small size, they have an enormous surface area, which gives them special properties of absorption into your body, as opposed to rock and shell-based minerals. One teaspoon of colloidals can have a total surface area of over 127 acres. That's billions of tiny electrically charged minerals. Now, some soil has the same major minerals, but the particles are hundreds of thousands of times larger and they're positively charged. Makes a big difference. You can't absorb them. If you're starving, you eat some soil, you get no nourishment. Your body just can't absorb inorganic minerals, can't convert them. Only a plant can take dead soil out of the earth, run it through the processor, make live stuff your body can use. So colloidal minerals are truly the most efficient way to get your minerals. They're liquid. They're small particle size. 
To give you a comparison, a red blood cell is 7 microns, and a particle of colloidal mineral is 1 one-hundredth of a micron or less. So that's 1 seven-thousandth the size of a red blood cell. And that's how we move minerals around our body, through our blood. And that's how we store them in our cells. The negative charge means they stay in solution or suspension. They don't settle out. Very, very absorbable. So obviously, if you're going to spend money for minerals, you want the highest value for your dollar. Plus, it's a lot easier to get kids to take the liquid vitamins and minerals than to get them to take those big horse pills. And most of the kids' products don't contain minerals anyway. Read the label. Maybe they have one mineral or five. Now, you can pay 60 or 70 bucks a month for some of these products in the health food store, and they're in tablet form, so they're not absorbable. You probably won't find one with more than 15 minerals maximum. Now, let's play Mr. Wizard. Here's an experiment you can do for yourself. Get any mineral tablet or a few of them. Mash them up with a mortar and pestle until you have a real fine dust. Make it as fine as you possibly can. Now, dump it into any kind of liquid you might normally drink. Milk, orange juice, whiskey, <laughs> whatever. Stir it. Or shake it, doesn't matter. What happens? You got scum on the top of your liquid, that's all. It's all scum. Doesn't go into solution. And that's the same thing those minerals do in your body, in your blood. They do not go into solution in your blood. And what good is it to take a mineral tablet, which, if it's in its whole form, may just as easily ride on through your body that way and go for the long ride down through your intestine all the way to the toilet. And if you mash it up, all that dust will go right through you, whether it's chelated or not. So think about what good you're getting from that tablet. Now, some people ask about specific food products, like green algae, barley green, bee pollen, and you do find some trace minerals in this stuff. But think about where they got their minerals, whether it's from land, water. The mineral content of the medium they're growing in is deficient. And although a product like this is often a great energy food, may well make you feel better short term, doesn't have the power and disease preventing capability. And Dr. Wallach talks about how ironic it was for him to watch farm animals. Goes back to NPK. The minerals just are not in the soil. Used to drive him nuts. He'd see cattle or sheep or chickens were going to be slaughtered in six months. They'd pour the minerals to them so they don't get fractures or diseases and they could economically make market weight reproductive age. And here you and me are and our kids trying to eke out these same minerals from sources so infinitesimally small, it's impossible. This can't be done. And according to Dr. Wallach, kids need 10 times the nutrition of an adult. Spend just a few minutes on oxygen. You can't live healthfully or to your maximum genetic potential for longevity without minerals and oxygen. A National Geographic survey discovered that as recently as 100 years ago, our atmosphere had 38% oxygen. How'd they figure that out? By studying the air trapped in polar ice. You use a bandsaw. You go down to where you know it's about 100 years ago. You know how much the ice develops each year so you can tell exactly where 100 years ago is. You cut the ice into cubes, measure the oxygen and air in them. 38% oxygen in our atmosphere 100 years ago. It's pretty scary. We've lost half of an essential resource. I mean, how important is oxygen? Well, you can live 30 days without food, maybe more for some of us, like me. You can live maybe five, three, four, five, six, seven days without water under ideal circumstances. But how long without oxygen? Four minutes. It's pretty essential. And most disease-causing processes now are called anaerobic, which means without oxygen. That's one reason doctors recommend aerobic exercise. You jog or exercise to get more oxygen going through your body. The anaerobic critters that cause disease in you are cold viruses, herpes, bacteria, yeast, fungus, cancer. Back in the 1920s, Dr. Otto Warburg, he was Austrian, won a Nobel Prize for studying cancer and amino acids and proteins. He discovered then that cancer prefers to flourish and grow in an anaerobic situation. Cancer does not like oxygen. Now knowing this, these critters all cause disease, they don't like oxygen. Do you want more oxygen or less? Obviously you want more. And if you already have one of these terrible things, you want even more. Now believe it or not, there's many sources of oxygen aside from the air you breathe. But let's talk about the simplest, cheapest, most effective one, food-grade hydrogen peroxide. We're not talking about the stuff you buy in the drugstore to put on a cut. 
That's 3% hydrogen peroxide. It's got lots of stabilizers in it, make it too dangerous to take internally. Of course, stubborn devil that I am, I did try it one time. I truly hope you'll take my word for it. Don't do it. It's the most gosh awful tasting stuff you could ever imagine. And you taste it for a long time. However, food grade hydrogen peroxide is fine when it's properly diluted. It's 35% hydrogen peroxide. Maybe your kids drink these little cartons of juicy juice, put them in a lunchbox for school, or these pint plastic bags of milk you can put on a shelf for a month without refrigeration. Those are preserved with food grade hydrogen peroxide. That's why they stay without refrigeration for six months. So food grade hydrogen peroxide is nothing new. In fact, it's been used in the US since the Civil War. In fact, prior to World War II, we didn't have antibiotics. So we used hydrogen peroxide and garlic. There was no sulfa drugs or antibiotics or prednisone before that. Now what happens when hydrogen peroxide goes into your body? The hydrogen peroxide is broken down by the enzyme catalase instantaneously when it hits your bloodstream. The catalase is an enzyme naturally in the bloodstream. And the H2O2 is broken down into water and oxygen, both of which you obviously need. So are there any bad, terrible things in there? Ah, it's a good way of elevating your blood and tissue levels in oxygen. So that's the reason for consuming hydrogen peroxide. And it destroys lots of these anaerobic critters that cause so much damage. Been using it for two years or so now. And I noticed two main differences in myself. First, anytime my wife or one of the kids would get a bug, I'd get it too. I'd get a fever and nausea and feel like crud for two or three days. But since I started, I've only gotten sick once the last couple of years, rather than the four or five times it'd normally be. Second, and more important, I used to have a severe headache almost every day, almost all day long. I popped Tylenol and Advil like crazy. That changed immediately, within three or four days. Now I'm down to maybe twice a month for Tylenol. Maybe my brain likes the oxygen. Okay, so much for oxygen. Back to minerals. The animals and people who eat these minerally deficient crops grown on this minerally deficient soil are getting mineral deficient diseases. Listen, even in the best of times, farming's a real marginal business and farmers are not gonna go out and dig up tons of stuff, and put it on their farmland, because when they add the extra 25 cents a bushel, the price of their wheat, nobody's gonna buy it. it just doesn't happen. And you wonder why kids can't do 10 push-ups. You think jogging or doing aerobics will make you healthy? Think again. Everybody knows what a Mercedes-Benz is, fine piece of machinery. Put it on a highway near you and head it to the coast farthest away from you. Run up there with no oil, no coolant. Will you make it? Uh-uh. Even the finest piece of automotive machinery you can find without oil, without coolant, you ain't going more than a few miles. And we expect our body to do some crazy things. We're running it without the oil, without the coolant. You just can't ask those things to your body. And by jogging and exercising, you actually speed up your body's destructive processes if you don't have enough minerals. Remember Jim Fix, Mr. Jogging? Used to run 10 miles a day, wrote a bunch of books about how he achieved a more healthful life through jogging. Did great until he dropped dead about age 48. He didn't supplement, ate only natural organic foods, and after about five heart attacks in one year, he finally gave up the ghost, 48 years old. Jogging can't make up for a lack of minerals. Then there's Ewell Gibbons, another natural food eater, no supplementation, ate wild hickory nuts, used to be on TV commercials for grape nuts. But he wasn't in that commercial too long, about three months, and he dropped dead, age 61, 62. Does it make you think? What's really the value of exercise in natural foods if you aren't getting the minerals you truly need? 200 years ago, you could eat a balanced diet, get what you needed, not today. A carrot may have some enzymes in it, some beta carotene, but it doesn't have any more nutrition than NPK, and the US Congress knew all that in 1936. So all you've learned is not new, it was known long ago, but people have lost their focus. And so long as you are minerally deficient, you're gonna get sick easily. You or members of your family may die before your time, and that won't get better, and insurance won't make it any better. Animals get a better deal. It's actually a congressional act. In the 1940s, when canned dog foods came out, one of the congressmen had a dog who was a bird hunter. Now, a guy was real nervous about his dog being fed something other than bacon grease and grits. Who knows what they might put in that can? 
So he submitted a bill to Congress, said commercially prepared dog foods had to be upgraded every three years to the state of the art for nutrition. That is a congressional act. And if you looked at dog food in the store, it had chromium and selenium and molybdenum and all that stuff in it 50 years ago. And human medicine is just now discovering chromium might be good for you. So veterinary medicine's always 50 years ahead on these things. How many people are like me, they have a real problem with food supplementation. They believe, like I used to, so long as you eat a properly balanced diet, you get all the vitamins and minerals you need. Organic carrots and apples, and grains, all that stuff. It's what you need, right? Well, it's sure what I thought. But organically grown foods are absolutely not more nutritionally valuable. You should also know that when the human embryo is at risk for certain problems in the first three months of pregnancy, that's when the organs form. The heart, muscles, eyes, liver, toes, fingers, etc. By 60 days, the human embryo is fully formed, and any biochemical defect will have occurred by then. And most women don't go to a doctor until they're two months pregnant. But that's the most critical time to have good nutrition, the first two months before pregnancy and, and two months after conception. And the fetus is at high risk for many terrible diseases without proper nutrition during that time. You may be wondering a few things. For instance, if all this is true, why don't we all get our daily dose of minerals by law? Good question. A couple reasons come to mind. First, you and I can think. We'll eat what we please. Phyto eats what you give him. So long as you feed him dog food, he's getting the right nutrition. It's when you start to feed him table scraps that he starts to get sick. Second, insurance. We talked about it before. May be as much of a problem as it is an aid. Why? Because insurance companies pay $50,000 for bypass surgery. Nice incentive. But if it came out of your pocket, you'd start to think long and hard about a better way. Animals, of course, don't have insurance. What if you had a milk cow with diabetes? What if you had a bunch of them? No health insurance covers it. Farmer could spend a small fortune trying to treat them. It's not cost efficient. If she wouldn't produce much milk, all the cow's energy go to fighting the disease, regulating her blood sugar. Be an expensive cow. A gallon of milk might run 60 bucks. You wouldn't sell too many gallons of that milk. So this economic consideration led to the discovery in 1958, a long time ago, that adding chromium in the cow's feed prevents diabetes. Lucky cows. Some diseases, of course, are genetic. Not much nutrition can do for that disease. But how do you know whether or not a disease is genetic? The doctor tells you so. Look, let's try to figure this out for ourselves. Say a farmer has a split ear of corn. Is that a genetic defect or nutritional deficiency? It's real easy to prove in an ear of corn. You dry all the seeds, plant them next spring, let them germinate, make ears of corn, cross-pollinate them, replant all those seeds in perfect soil. And if you don't have a boron deficiency in the soil, all those ears will be perfect. But if all the ears come out split like the original, it's a genetic defect. Key here, in one generation, you get hundreds of ears of corn from the seed of a single ear. With human populations in nine months, you have one single baby. And everybody eats different, so you can't get a controlled study. Can't find a couple to reproduce 100 babies out of gestation to determine whether something is genetic or not. And even if you could, it'd be real tough to convince any woman I know to be part of that study. So here's what confuses people. Maybe you have a child with the symptoms of Duchenne muscular dystrophy, and you know that's genetic, because every doctor says so. So that's what your boy has, so the situation's hopeless, so you can't do anything, so you just do the best you can, watch him deteriorate, and wait until he dies. Let's be logical. Two factors determine whether or not it's genetic. Is it consistent? A genetic disease is transmitted from generation to generation to generation. Now, if it's in your family history, that doesn't necessarily mean it is genetic. But if it's not in your family history, that almost certainly means it's not genetic. Second, is the defect identical? If it's a little different, it's not genetic. One of the medical doctor's favorite terms now with regard to Duchenne muscular dystrophy is spontaneous mutation. Boy, I've heard that a bunch of times. That's where there's no family history of the disease, and if there's no history, it wasn't in the genes, how can it be genetic? Only one way, spontaneous mutation. All of a sudden, out of nowhere, some crazy gene really goes nuts, decides to kill off the whole body with a degenerative disease. So the good thing about this explanation, for the medical doctors, it explains away the sticky question of how someone like my son can get a genetic disease when there's no traceable record of it in our family. And in talking to a lot of parents, I'm discovering that around the country, there now appear to be thousands of normal, hardworking, God-fearing genes get up one morning, decide they can't take the stress anymore. 
One MD researcher told me she thinks a third of all these cases now are spontaneous mutation. Another possible explanation, which you'll never hear from them, is that these are not cases of genetic Duchenne muscular dystrophy. Instead, there's something else they can't explain. Nutritional deficiency, maybe? Another question, if parents have more than one offspring with a disease, doesn't that prove it's genetic? Maybe, maybe not. Dr. Wallach has his own explanation. First, many things that people believe to be hereditary or genetic aren't. A simple bit of logic tells you they can easily be nutritional. Just answer a single question. Who teaches you what and how to eat? Your parents, your family. So if two or more members of the same family have the same or a similar disability, that doesn't mean it's hereditary. Could still easily be nutritional. Second, several years ago, a group of medical doctors we mentioned earlier put out a pie chart showing the origin of birth defects. We'll mention it again. According to the chart, about 25% of the birth defects were genetic. 1% was a result of radiation. You know, x-ray technicians always ask a woman now if she's pregnant, so that shouldn't be much of a factor. And 65 to 70% of the cases, the origin is unknown. Dr. Wallach's response, of course, I'd bet the ranch 99% of those cases are caused by nutritional deficiencies. He mentions especially selenium, chromium, calcium, copper, gallium, cesium, lithium deficiencies causing birth defects. Big one for MD is selenium. If I were you, I'd be real skeptical from all we've covered so far about how one product could supply all the minerals necessary to the human body. You should be skeptical, but we're talking about a pretty unique product. The deposits were discovered in the 1920s in the Utah mountains by a prospector. He was looking for gold. He'd camp at a site, prospect. When he came up empty, he'd pick up camp, move to a different area. Now, as he traveled around, he came across a little stream, tasted pretty weird. And he figured, well, it's just mineral water, tastes bad, but probably won't kill me. So he drank some of the stuff while he's prospecting in that area. Must be something very special about the water. And he figured maybe he'd found his gold. So he got the mineral rights for the area. Turned out the water was coming from a prehistoric Ubik shale deposit. Within a few days after starting, I noticed the hip pain I'd had for several years was gone. That realization reminded me of my elbows. Since I was near the Amtrak train yards in Miami at the time, I walked over and started picking up rocks and throwing them. Both arms, 20 minutes, just like a kid, hard as I could possibly throw, not a twinge of pain. Since then, I played catch with my kids a bunch of times. No pain. The percentage you'll see on the, the container are measured in parts per million rather than milligrams. Milligrams is a measurement of metallic minerals. Colloidal minerals are always measured in parts per million. And because colloidals are so much better absorbed, it's pretty hard to correlate the measurements. For instance, let's say you orally take 2,000 milligrams of calcium carbonate or oyster shell. How much are you absorbing? Maybe 10%, 200 milligrams. Will that meet your requirement for calcium? Uh. If you're having any symptoms, receding gums, osteoporosis, joint pain, convulsions, eye twitches, etc., 200 milligrams of absorbed calcium is like trying to put out a Yellowstone forest fire with a water gun. Won't happen. But as you absorb these colloidal minerals, they immediately go to where they're needed. They are absorbed. It's plant-based, been through the process of photosynthesis. If you're going to supplement, shouldn't you be getting your money's worth? Remember, it took 70 million years to make this product. And even then, it was only discovered by accident. Now, because of soil depletion, you're just not getting the minerals you need. That old-fashioned argument you hear from doctors and nutritionists, just eat a balanced diet, does not hold water anymore. If you could eat a balanced diet, get the minerals you need, be terrific. 200 years ago, yeah, not now. And the cost, of course, is negligible compared to the financial and emotional costs, the types of diseases we're talking about on this tape. One medium-sized hospital bill could equal a lifetime for your entire family. That's been known since 1958 that the proper mineral supplementation prevents these diseases in animals and often cures them in the early stages. If you think your body chemistry is so vastly different from your dog's or cat's body chemistry, don't bother with the minerals. But consider this. The average animal that gets sick has a much better chance of getting well than humans do. The food we eat is almost guaranteed to make animals sick. The minimum daily requirements of animals for vitamins, minerals, proteins, and fats are much more well-researched than the MDRs for humans, and animals' RDA is considerably higher. Does that make sense to you? Do you really think a 20-pound dog needs more nutrition than you do, or your child does? Remember, most animals live to approximately 20 times their age of maturity. Humans live to only about five times their age of maturity. Any correlation there? 
It's your choice. Consider all you've learned. Decide what's best for yourself and your family. Let's do a quick recap of the benefits you may receive only from some of the trace minerals. First, selenium protects cell membranes, reduces risk of cancer, enhances your immune system. Selenium deficiency can lead to heart attacks, muscular dystrophy, cystic fibrosis, other diseases. Second, chromium and vanadium are required for glucose tolerance factor. Their deficiency can lead to hypoglycemia or diabetes. Third, tin supports hair growth and can enhance reflexes. Tin deficiency leads to symmetrical baldness and reduced response to noise. Fourth, lithium reduces aggressiveness, violence, and self-destruction. Lithium deficiency can lead to depression, mania, suicide, or spouse and offspring abuse. Fifth, gallium modulates brain chemistry, aids anti-tumor activity. Brain dysfunction may result from lack of gallium. Sixth, molybdenum modulates your calcium, magnesium, copper metabolism. Lacking molybdenum, you may develop a copper deficiency. Seventh, boron helps your calcium, magnesium retention in your bones, helping to prevent osteoporosis, arthritis. Eighth, zinc enhances your immune system and thymus gland, protecting against birth defects. Lack of zinc can lead to infertility, chronic infections. And that's just a few of the results of trace minerals. So remember, we use so many labor-saving devices, we need fewer and fewer calories. And as food intake is reduced, it's nearly impossible to get all the nutrients you need without supplementing. Your metabolism requires more vitamins and minerals than you get from the standard three meals a day. As your body is attacked by stressors, drugs, injury, sickness, pollutants in the air, pollutants in food, water, you lose nutrients fast. You lose your natural ability to fight off disease. So you need more minerals, more vitamins to support the, the enzyme systems that help protect your body. Now, of all the federal agencies associated with the health of Americans, the U.S. Department of Agriculture is the best informed on nutrition. And recent USDA statistics show that 95% of Americans don't get the minimum recommended daily allowance of selenium. 90% don't get the minimum RDA of chromium. 75% don't get the minimum of magnesium. For calcium, it's 68%. Vitamin A, 50%. Vitamin B, 45%. Vitamin C, 41%. Now, these are just a few examples. And remember, there's a hotly contested debate on the RDA values set by the U.S. Department of Agriculture. A lot of world-class scientists consider those RDAs to be far too low. But it's interesting to see more people are deficient in four minerals than most of the commonly known vitamins. That's another reason to get excited. It's the most complete mineral food supplement on the market, time-tested and economical. Take millions of dollars worth of research to create a marketable product, and even if someone did, the price would be hundreds of dollars a quart. Yeah, I am really sold on this product. Now, what you've heard has been tested and proven millions of times in farm animals. Most of it's been known since the 50s. Millions are spent to get laboratory animals of proper nutrition. Look, as my wife would tell you, I've tried dozens of nutritional products over the years, and only one of all those products did anything at all. It was a great energy product but it didn't release my aches and pains. You can't get nutrition from your food if it isn't going into your food through the soil. All your vegetables get is NPK, and that's mostly what you get. I think the evidence is overwhelming that our kids, and us too for that matter, ought to have some type of supplementation. They need it. And especially if you have someone in your family who's chronically sick, you need to help them nutritionally. To me, Dr. Wallach's evidences and experience in, in working with animals is real convincing. The dangers to someone who's seriously ill and also nutritionally deficient, it's just not sensible to not supplement. I feel real confidence helping my son, but it's tough to prove because the other treatment he's been receiving. He was well into this treatment program before we began using the, the minerals. But getting the proper nutrition and the proper amount of selenium certainly can't hurt him. I do know he hasn't broken any bones in the last couple of years. Before that, he broke his arm twice and his collarbone once. He recently received the Most Improved Athlete Award for his entire elementary school. Believe me, that's unheard of for a boy with Duchenne muscular dystrophy. They only get worse. That's what the doctors say anyway. Now what I'd suggest you do is make a list of all those nagging aches and pains and chronic conditions you wish you didn't have anymore. And if you're my age, you must have a few. Don't just make a mental list, write them down on paper. For instance, my right hip has been painful almost every day for three years. You wonder what's going on. You think of some truly awful things that might be happening. And you think that because it's been hurting for so long, it must be serious. And you don't see a doctor because you figure it must be serious. Then I took the minerals. Within a few days, the pain was no more. Now, I've been a year or so without hip pain. 
I suffered nearly every day from mid-afternoon slump between 3 and 5 o'clock. I was ready for a nap. Now, maybe once a week. And since high school, I've twisted my ankles easily. Maybe three or four times a year, I'd step wrong, wind up flat in my face. Ankle was throbbing for hours, painful for several days. Since I began, I twisted the ankle a few times, but uh, pain lasts a minute or two. That was it. I was back up and walking. So whether you have pain in the fingers or the wrists or elbows or the knees or neck or low back pain or indigestion or constipation or afternoon slump or or emotional problems, or high blood pressure, bone spurs, calcium deposits, tendonitis, bursitis, muscle cramps, or other muscle pain, put it all down on paper. Take for a few weeks. See the difference. Isolated minerals don't work well without a nutritional program that contains trace minerals in appropriate balance. Now, remember, what's the cost? Well, in general, the dose is one ounce per 100 pounds of body weight a day. That's the correct dose. So if uh, for someone who weighs 150 pounds, it costs about 90 cents a day. And you double that if you have a particular health problem that you want to work on right now. And you double it until you see some results. So give the mineral a legitimate chance. Start with four quarts. Four quarts will last you up to three months, give you plenty of time to see and feel a real physical difference. After that first order of 100 bucks or more, it gives you the right to always buy it wholesale, which is about 30% off. If you're satisfied with a product and want to reorder in the future, you get the wholesale price. Users become crusaders. You become a crusader when you find a product that changes your life. And as you talk to others and get them to try it, you develop a network of crusaders. It's a pretty secure network. Mine from an underground Yumic shale deposit on a mountain in Utah. Been there 70 million years. Air was full of oxygen back then. Some trees grew 25 feet a year. Earth was a nutrient-rich environment. Today it's nutrient depleted, so you might expect the cost to get to the consumer be a bit higher than a tablet that was made last week. But since these colloidal minerals are far more absorbable by your body, results for you are well worth the cost. When you have truth and excitement on your side, you have staying power. So think about the values most important to you. Think about whether you believe the results Dr. Wallach has seen in animals, and the fact there's actually legislation to ensure animals get the proper nutrition. And the soil depletion, think about that. Is that logical to you? Does it indicate you and your family are not getting the proper nutrition? And factor in the fact that obviously both Dr. Wallach and I have a financial interest in whether or not you order. Distributing this tape is not an altruistic effort for me. So caveat emptor. And factor in whether or not the logic here makes sense. Does the nutrition of animals really compare to the nutrition of people? I think it does, but I'm not you. Maybe you still believe you get all the nutrition you need from the food. Factor that in. And factor in the fact that most of this information is probably new to you. Chances are 90% you haven't heard before. True? Not true. How reliable is Dr. Wallach? How reliable am I? What I think it adds up to is there's no way you can know for sure one way or the other what's best for you here. Only way you can know is to take that little jump. Find out for yourself firsthand. Take it yourself for a few weeks see the difference it makes. After the first order, you qualify for the distributor price of $18 a quart. Now, if you didn't receive an order form, just call the phone number on the label to get one. This is Dr. Wallach with a final message. Information gives you the ability to make decisions with confidence. I hope you've enjoyed my message. By giving your body the proper raw materials every day, you'll be taking the necessary steps in living healthier and living longer. Make the decision to take control of your personal health and longevity program today. Colloidal minerals are not like antibiotics. You don't get a prescription which you use for 10 days and then you're done. Your prescription for colloidal minerals should only expire when your need for oxygen expires. You need to supplement your diet with the 90 essential nutrients each and every day of your life. Millions of people have heard my message all across the world and have now decided to make the consumption of colloidal minerals a daily ritual. Just as there are many manufacturers of aspirin, there are now many manufacturers of vitamins and mineral supplements. Be sure to get your liquid colloidal minerals derived only from the very best organic plant source deposits. Colloidal minerals are the mineral source our bodies were designed to use, not ground up rocks. Since you will most likely be supplementing your diet each and every day, don't get caught paying retail prices. My daddy always said, why pay retail when you can buy wholesale? 
One of my trusted colleagues will show you how to purchase the highest quality products wholesale so you can save gobs of money off the retail price each year. The distributor whose name and phone number is on this cassette will be happy to help you. Live long and prosper. Hey all you Dr. Wallach supporters and Longevity fans out there. Most of you at some point will have come up against this NutraSmart bashing of Dr. Wallach. There are a few articles that are published specifically to tarnish Dr. Wallach and his message. And I have actually written this whole book. This was a few years ago. I wrote a full-length book in rebuttal to these vicious attacks on Dr. Wallach. I believe every objection that you are going to encounter in the field is addressed in this book. It's absolutely a great resource for you to have as a distributor. And if you do ever have anybody coming up to you saying, I heard what you said about Dr. Wallach and I was going to look into some of his vitamins, but you know, I came up against this article on the internet. NutraSmart article is probably the one they read. So it's a great deal, guys. I put it up very cheap. It's just another tool in our toolbox. And the Amazon link is in the description of this video. Make sure to check out our food YouTube channel called Notice Foods. This is 100% Dr. Wallach approved. And the chef that is preparing the food here and teaching you how to follow Dr. Wallach's food guidelines and Dr. Glidden's food guidelines. He is an industry professional over 22 years experience and a college diploma to back it up. And we do have experienced cooks and bakers as well working on content for the YouTube channel Notice Foods and the Instagram channel Notice Foods. It's 100% gluten free, oil free, all the stuff about burning fats and all of the rules that, that you would need to know or follow. We're here to teach it to you here as well as give you tons of ideas for recipes, individual dishes and meals. Of course, in the near future, we do have a cookbook coming out. Stay tuned for it. And if you'd like to talk to us directly, you can call us. Actually, you can call Judy. She's downriver Detroit. You can call from anywhere in the US, Canada, Mexico, UK, Australia, New Zealand, any other country you want to email us or send us a DM on whatever app that you want to contact us on. Instagram is super convenient for us. And that's for any sales or product information in those countries or any distributor information. 